Hi, I'm Wilf. Now, this is for Sam's Global Science Show. I wonder how useful is testing for diseases? Imagine a very rare disease that only infects one person in 10,000 people. And we have this test and it's 99% accurate. Let's say you have the test and it comes out positive that you do have the disease. What are the chances of you actually having the disease? Pause the video and come up with a number with your big brain and then unpause it and watch the rest of the video. So you've come up with a number now. So my mum put a poll on Twitter and 75% of you thought that you probably have the disease or you definitely do but did you know the chances of you actually having it are less than one percent if you want to be precise which i do it's 0.98 percent we're going to show you guys on our trusty whiteboard so down here we're going to put one million that's the amount of people we're testing so we're testing a million people so it only infects one ten thousand right so you might be thinking that it would only infect a hundred in the uh, in the million and you're right a hundred people out of the million get infected and nine hundred ninety nine thousand nine hundred people don't get infected so we're gonna write that down here so a hundred people have the disease and 999,900 people don't this is 99% accurate but in real life disease testing there's actually two different types of accuracy there is sensitivity which is if you do have disease um how likely it will know that you actually have the disease um, and the other one is specificity, 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 the other kind of accuracy is specificity, finally I got that right, it took so long to practice that, <laughs> um, which is if you don't have it, it won't find, it won't say that you do have it. So. We've got 100 people who do have it. If the machine's at 99% right, then one of them will get it wrong. So 99 people will be in the positive result, but one will be in the negative result that they don't have it. And the 99's in green, the 99. So now we're going to move on to these two. Don't have the disease, but you do get the machine says you do so the test gets it wrong one percent of the time so the answer should be and is 9999 okay there the people who don't have it and get the correct result is everybody else which is 989901 so we're going to add up how many people have a positive result. Okay, 10,098. And we're going to do the same for negative. We only add one more. You would expect the machine to get most of them right. And yes, it does. But when you actually look into it, it turns out it doesn't really work that well for rare diseases like this one. So in the negative row, only one of them was wrong. But in the positive row, 9,999 were wrong. Not that good a test. So the question we asked in the first place was, how likely are you to have the disease? Now, if you're in this group, it will be 99 and 10,098. But it's actually much more likely for you to be in this group. So the chances of being in the group who do have it and they know that they, you have it is 1 in 102 or, like I said, 0 0.98. This is a very rare disease and three things that affect this chart is that how rare the, the disease is. Um, how many people you're testing and how accurate the test is 
because we just assumed it was 99% accurate. So what do you think about COVID testing? Is it good? Is it bad? Leave me a comment. And that's me overnight. Woo!